With brass winds, the problems may not always be as subtle as those on woodwinds, but they are significant nonetheless. Stuck mouthpieces are a very common problem that most repair shops pull for free or for nominal cost. For you, the band director, a tool to have in your kit is a mouthpiece puller. We encourage the Bobcat mouthpiece puller available from many suppliers. There are others that are also capable, but the Bobcat has proven its worth in terms of durability and adaptability to most brass instruments. Mouthpiece pullers work by pushing and pulling simultaneously. It's important to know that stuck mouthpieces never twist out. Because of the tapers, the mouthpiece must be pulled straight back from its receiver. Trouble starts when people try to twist the mouthpiece out either by securing in a door jam or twisting it with pliers. The results can be twofold irreparable damage to the mouthpiece, and often a lead pipe torn from its solder joints, twisted beyond repair. In this instance, a job that is typically free, pulling the mouthpiece, costs the customer upwards around $125. There are those enterprising parents who approach the problem of stuck mouthpieces simply and pragmatically. If it's stuck, modify the case. The lesson? Use a mouthpiece puller to remove stuck mouthpieces. If that doesn't work, take it to your repair technician. With young musicians, each and every instrument needs to be at its best. A student who quits band because their instrument is underperforming is an inexcusable loss. With that said, dented mouthpieces matter. Dents in mouthpieces can negatively impact intonation and response. A simple tool to have in your kit is a mouthpiece truing tool. With most dents, simply twisting the tool in until it stops will remove damage well enough in the short term. Always take the mouthpiece to a repair shop to ensure it is absolutely true and properly fits the receiver. Be mindful with mouthpieces with split shanks. It's easy to flare the end, changing the stop point of the mouthpiece in its receiver. This plays havoc with intonation and response. If this happens, provide a temporary substitute mouthpiece until a repair tech can fix that which has flared. Broken solder joints happen all the time. It's important to secure the broken solder joint as soon as possible because typically, soon after one solder joint breaks, another nearby breaks too, setting off an expensive chain reaction. Avoid using masking tape. It does not sufficiently secure the broken joint and leaves glue goo everywhere. Also, do not use any type of glue. None typically hold well and can be costly for the repair tech to remove before proper soldering. Our recommendation is to use cable zip ties, the kind that can be found at any hardware store. These are strong, don't leave a mess, and are easily removed prior to proper repair. If a water key spring is broken or missing, the best thing to do is hold the water key closed until a new spring is installed. Plastic coated twist ties like those found on bread wrappers work well. So do hair scrunchies or binders. These may allow the player to continue using the water key until a new spring is installed. Avoid using masking tape. The glue quickly makes a mess that is time consuming to remove for the technician, resulting in a higher expense for the player. Rubber bands are a definite no. When saliva mixes with rubber bands, the resulting sulfuric acid is devastating to both lacquer and plating, and can actually thin brass over time. Look at the black etchings on the silver plating in these photos. This took only two days of contact with a rubber band holding the water key. This etching is permanent and cannot be removed by polishing. If a water key spring is just weak, a simple fix you can do with narrow round-nosed pliers is to bend the back loop up against the underside of the water key. 
Place a business card between the spring loop and the water key to prevent scratching. Then bend the loop as shown. Done. With bent water keys, inspect to ensure the pin or screw that holds the water key to its mount or bridge is secure. If not, reset the pin or thread the screw back in. Then, with smooth jaw pliers, bend the water key back to its proper position over the hole. You may have to put a new cork or synthetic pad in, but that's rare. If the water key cork is missing altogether, your options include self-adhesive synthetic water key pads. Valentino is the most common. Another option is multiple layers of masking tape stuck together to form a pad. Yet another option is a latex-free Band-Aid. The player may have to pull the slide to let the water out, but in an emergency, we all need to be creative. Make sure, though, that it's a latex-free Band-Aid. We run into the same problems with latex Band-Aids that we do with rubber bands. Amato water keys are good water keys, but require regular oiling. A good rule is to oil the Amato as often as the pistons are oiled. Amatos stuck closed are common, but are not difficult to free up. Put a couple drops of valve oil in all possible openings and wait approximately one hour. Then, try to push the Amato open with your fingers. A common mistake is to strike the Amato with a mallet. This often makes a dent and breaks the entire assembly off the slide, resulting in an unnecessary repair. If the Yamato water key gets stuck open, the fix is similar. Put a couple drops of valve oil in all possible openings and wait approximately one hour. With a pen, push against the piston from the opposite side. Again, do not use a mallet or anything more forceful than the pen to get the Yamato working again. 